we're just hyping it up. You know just how it had to be. Just take a look around, boy. Can't you see? Guys are bumping, rushing. Girls are just blushing. With rocks and scratch. While herbs on percussion. Setting the stage for the stage to get set off. I bust a rhyme and a dance and just get off. So get off because you bit off more than you can chew. Now watch the dynamic duo do. Well, it'll go go thing. Come on, rock and swing. You gotta roll with kid and play. Now everybody sing. This is the Tanya Free and Friends Talk Show, your destination for social and political straight talk on air, online, and on point. Get ready to join the conversation with your host, Ms. Tanya Free. Today is Wednesday, May 26th. Welcome to the Tanya Free and Friends Talk Show. I am Tanya Free, joined by my wonderful friends, former Richmond City Councilman Bill Johnson. How are you? I'm doing fine, Ms. Free. Thank you so much for having me back. Well, thank you so much for being here. And also with us is Joanne Henry. How are you? I'm doing fine, Ms. Free. Thank you for having me back. Well, thank you for being here. And also sitting at the social media desk is Antoinette Baylor. How are you? I'm doing fine. We're wonderful, wonderful. And working behind the scenes is Marcus Evans and Mr. Free. I want to thank everyone for being here today. We want our listeners to join the conversation. Phone lines are open, 804-321-1010, or our toll-free number, 844-321-1010, or you can text us at Tanya Free 63975. Um, I want to send condolences to the family of um, o- Oklahoma, um, Omaha, Officer Carrie Oscar, I can't, um, hopefully I'm pronouncing her right, right name right, who was killed in the line of duty last week. Um, Officer Carrie was, plan- was planning to go on maternity leave and spend time with her daughter, mm-hmm. who was born prematurely um, a few months ago. A very sad uh, tragedy. Um, and also, too, um, I want to send out thoughts and prayers to all of those in um, Oklahoma and Texas who are experiencing a um, devastation with the series of deadly storms. Um, it is something that they are being overwhelmed with water and out in California there's a drought, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. and in California it's so bad that they're talking about uh, recycling toilet water to tap water. Now the thought of that is not, you know, very um, appealing but you got to do what you got to do in order to survive, you know. Mm-hmm. And, and in fact, they're actually doing some of that and it's being used for um, irrigation and manufacturing. So what do you think of that? I mean, would you all, how would you feel about that if you had to actually use, turn uh, toilet water into tap water? Well, as long as you don't talk about it, I think I could work with it. <laughs> 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 but uh, 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 there's so much they could be doing and should have been proactive before right. now. Because with three quarters of the planet it's made up of water, mm-hmm. and they know how to take the salt out of the water. Right, Seems right. to me you can take the salt out of the water and use it for certain things to save your fresh water for mm-hmm. something else. Mm-hmm. You know, the same way about gasoline versus uh, 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 gas. Right. You know, uh, natural gas, you know, take the trucks and the heavy users over to natural gas and mm-hmm. leave the other stuff. So it, I think is an answer to it, and I don't know why they've gotten to this point before they start to right doing That's, mass. Right, I was thinking the same thing. Yeah. How did you get so low? Yeah, you know before that you we, that you now have to put on you know uh, various restrictions, mm-hmm. and you're talking about toilet water to tap water and all of that. How did you allow the supply to get so low without it's doing been like something? Three years. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Head rain. yeah. Yeah. So you know, but we'll see. We'll see how that works out, and also too, it also sends a signal to us that maybe we should be a little more uh, conservative in our use, mm-hmm. you know, so that we don't experience the same thing. And I know people in Texas are probably like, "Look, come and get our water. We got too much of it." So, mm-hmm. but anyway, before you move too far down the road, uh, we lost uh, a, a fine gentleman. And the, uh, uh, that was one of our uh, representatives, Delegate Frank Hall. Oh, okay. Yes. And okay. he died yesterday. Okay, you know? thank you. And he was a gentleman. I knew him, and I don't care how it got. He was mm-hmm. always out in the streets smiling and, and shaking hands and trying to do what he could. If you called him, he was coming. He, so he's a fine gentleman, and we've really lost somebody special. Very much so. Thank you for bringing that up, and also to our condolences to his family. Yes. You know, so... Um, we need to recognize those persons that have dedicated their lives to our community mm-hmm. and have given mm-hmm. back. That is very, very important. So, 
Let's turn our attention to another interesting issue. The President's Task Force has released a report on the 21st century policing. One of the things that caught my attention about this is that um, the issue between trust between the community and law enforcement. According to the report, policing has become more effective since the 1990s. Um, better equipped and better organized to tackle um, crime. However, the Gallup report shows that the public's confidence in the police uh, remain flat and that among some populations of pe people of color, confidence has declined. The reason given is that poor and people of color feel the greatest impact of mass incarceration such that uh, for too many citizens, um, people of color, are arrested in prison and has and is almost inevitable uh, and a part of the American experience. Do you all agree with that? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Very much so. Very yeah. much so. Yeah. And you know they didn't have to do a report to tell us that. Well, I, I think in this information age, that it's going to be hard. It's going to be important that we put the put the right pieces in the right boxes. Okay. You can't incarcerate as many black folk as you have incarcerated they are plunged into a culture. And then when you come back out here, you've been disenfranchised. Right. And you've got this attitude, then you can't get back into society. And a lot of that is transitioning back out onto the streets. Don't right. disrespect me, don't say anything about me, I can't do this, that, and the third. And then these people are going to eat. Right. So you're, 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 you're focused in on a, on a, on a, on a subculture that people are just surviving any way they can. And a lot of times violence is how things are resolved because there are no other issue. No other alternative. No other, that's right, no other alternative to get what you need to survive. Okay, so how do we turn that around, Joanne? Of course, they need jobs when they come out of these institutions because they don't have jobs. They just send them out on the street with nothing. And we got to train the people when they come out to have jobs and a better attitude towards our police force, mm -hmm. I think, because they have been incarcerated for so long. Well, I, so, I think one of the things, and uh, Scotty uh, made this reference last week, our friend Scotty Reed, that we are living in a modern uh, slavery. And I say that from the standpoint that I read a report yesterday where the governor of Maryland, um, uh, Governor Hogan, um, they decided to, uh, there were some additional funds opposed to putting it to education. They are putting it towards um, juvenile detentions. Mm. You know, and the people are upset. Now, they had some protests, but I didn't see the large numbers like we did for Freddie Gray. Now, to me, when you have things like that, it, it needs to be um, a, a big uproar about things like that. Because to me, like this report says, we are, you know, people of color, it's inevitable that we, you know, incarceration is on the agenda. Mm -hmm. So unless we speak up and protest and do something about it, money and funds will be directed towards things far as incarceration. And if they, if they are building facilities and that sort of thing, who do you think are going to be filling them up? Mm -hmm. Heads yeah. and beds. Right. right. So, so, you know, my, my question is this. How do, like I said, once again, how do we turn this around? I mean, one of the things I think we, if we are not at the table to see where funds are going in order to uh, make sure they're going in a place where we benefit in, on a positive note opposed to on the negative note, then, you know, like I said, once again, this report is inevitable. Our direction is already um, being planned mm -hmm. for the negative. And they, they're telling you they can pretty much tell your path Right. Before you even yeah. <laughs> get out of, mil out of elementary school. Mm -hmm. Right. And they're saying 30% of black folk are in poverty. Yeah. Well, that means 70% of us are doing well. But at what point do that 70% start to answering it, the questions of what do we do in our community? Mm -hmm. Okay, We can't get educated and get good jobs and move out of the community where you need it the most. You see what I'm saying? Right. Uh, they need jobs. Well, how can you get a job when the employers mm -hmm. are, are, are putting, putting the bar so high, mm -hmm. even raising the minimum wage? Mm -hmm. You can't go up a ladder if you can't get on it. And you you know what I'm saying? And, and, and these, what kind of jobs are you going to get? What are you qualified for? And you have to have a high school diploma because the students who come to Dream Academy, mm -hmm. those the parents, these are um, older 
um, students. Have st older, older students, and they're saying, I need my high school diploma because I need a job, or either I'm at work, but my boss said I need a high school diploma. Mm -hmm. yeah, but These then, are low-income people, too, and I think once they get a, their high school diploma, maybe they're, they're, it'll be better for them. They got to have a high school diploma. Yeah, That's but the thing is, no one, why do they drop out from the start? Well, I guess I'm, I'm asking that question. Nobody, nobody. You know what? Looking at the um, reports from come across my desk, some um, have poor attendance. Parents are dead, live with their grandmother or uncle, or they just transit. So that's how come they, it started the way it did with these um, some of our people. They didn't have parents who their parents are absent out of their life. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I guess I can't. You know, take that to be the only reason. I mean, you got to well, be you some can't other say reason. That's the only reason. <laughs> yeah, that is a big part of it. Part of it. Okay. Yeah. You can't okay. take the men out of the family yeah, yeah. and then expect the woman to, to uh, the, the, the woman to just raise kids with all of the challenges that they face out here. Mm -hmm. It's 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 a it's a serious it's a serious thing, you know, mm -hmm. to say that you don't have a mother or you've got a mother and she's out here cracked out or she's got two, three jobs as he's working and right. older sister's looking out and mm -hmm. big brother, he's trying to make a way. That's a whole lot of dynamics mm -hmm. focusing in on kids today. And then okay. when I don't have the same kind of tennis shoes you have and, mm -hmm. you know, I don't live like you live, the stigma forces mm -hmm. kids at a certain age to just drop do out. without, and you then, know. And then and, some kids would drop out because they think no one cares. Okay. I've seen, yeah, I, can, so, I can go with that. Yeah, yeah. Right. So there's so, a lot, there's a lot of, there's a lot of pressures on, 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 on our families and in our communities today, and I don't think they're being adequately addressed by us. Right, mm -hmm. that's, that's my point. We oh, are, getting we are not, back to we, the we, 70%. We are, we are not adequately addressing it, and we are like playing into the hands of those that are planning for us to be incarcerated. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, now, my, that's my point. Okay, now the 70%, remember, they are the middle class people do all of... Mm, do all of them think about the people who are in the 30 percent that are lower class people or, you know, in poverty? No, because I have arrived. Mm -hmm. They're not looking back like, right. you know, to help. Mm -hmm. Right. That, that, that plays a part of it, too. But also, too, let's, let's give those folks that are um, in need, you know, they need to do some things for themselves. Yes, mm -hmm. I agree. I mean, mm -hmm. sometimes I get irritated when we mm -hmm. think that, okay, they are just, you know, we, if we pour money into it to everything, that... They are not supposed to do anything. Yeah, I agree with that. So we, I, yeah. that came to mind when you talk about you know dropping out of high school mm -hmm. and that sort of thing. You yeah. know, so we also have to look at at the political leaders who create po policies, and there is a culture of dependency. Whereas if you if you are in the system, welfare system, whatever, and you find a way to crawl up out of the system, right? Yeah, I'm going to cut you off. Well, no. How can I find a way to use this to support you? But if you come into the system with, say, two kids, mm -hmm. uh, you can't stay on the system with four kids you know, in three more years. You can't do that. Right. And if I can identify the father and the father's willing to come into the home, how come he can't be included in mm -hmm. the services that are being offered? And you're not just promoting a culture of single mothers but you now have a young family and still mm -hmm. put the support systems out there for them and include that father that's coming out of inc incarceration, allow him to get his driver's license, mm -hmm. allow him to get back into the system with the support that the mother was getting before he got there. Okay. So you've got policies now that if the father comes into the home, well, we're going to cut you off. Well, she's going to keep him out. Until y'all head well, back to the suburbs. Well, I would say make some conditions on that. He can, she can stay on the system, providing he has a job. You can't get no job right out of, right out of, yeah. uh, out of, it's out of hard. College. You've got to go. You've got to get in line with everybody else. Mm -hmm. You're a high school dropout. You're previously mm -hmm. drug dependent. You don't have a driver's mm -hmm. license. And what is your skill set? No. And you did that. When okay. You what about going to school? Yeah. Well, how, what about going to school? How are you going to get there? How, yeah, how are you, you going to pay for any, it? Yeah. If you don't have any money. And then you don't have a corporate culture that's concerned enough to bring the jobs into where the people are. You can't even get the corporate culture to come in and put the retail mm -hmm. and put the kinds of, of, of resources we need, food deserts and things like that. And they said they had a list of um, employers who were hiring um, um, incarcerated people who were coming out, but that's not true. 
it's hard for those people to still find jobs, even with that list they have going around the city. Here. Okay, then we need to come up, they need to come up with something that um, help people to rehabilitate because if you can't get a job, if you can't get in school, then chances are you're going to end up back, back where you were. Back into the revolving right. door. Mm -hmm. Right, mm -hmm. exactly. Mm -hmm. door. So that, that's an that's a issue right there that we all need to address. Well, this is something that, that's not adequate to be addressed to let you know that nobody's hands are totally clean on this. Right, mm -hmm. okay? I agree with if you corporations, 100%. If corporations are going to get all their tax breaks and all their incentives mm -hmm. and they're going to move where it's comfortable, well, I don't care how comfortable you are. We're going to find a way to get there to get what we need from what you're offering. Right. So it's just, you know, they talked about what happened in Baltimore and they burned down the CVS. Well, you got GEICO. You just come on back. You, it's not like you're losing anything. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You've got insurance. You can't even have a business without mm -hmm. insurance. Mm -hmm. So you're going to get paid, but that shouldn't be any, any reason for you not to bring your businesses into the community where they are needed and the government needs to be more forceful in seeing to it that come on in here come on into these urban centers and we then Brooklyn Park Boulevard 25th 25th Street Hall Street we need to have these kinds of of of, of retail in our communities uh, one of my our, one of our colleagues here was talking about uh, 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 people talking about jobs we don't necessarily need, Josh, that's not the problem. We need retail. We need mm -hmm. a place to spend our money. We've got to go outside of our community to spend what little money we have, even our welfare money. We've got okay. to go somewhere else to let spend me, it. Let me ask you this, Bill. <laughs> what, what the people in that community, what is their responsibility in this whole thing? Well, first of all, listen, um, I, entered, I went to Family Dollar, and they said that um, the people who are in our community, they just steal them blind. So that's, yeah, that's one wow. reason why they don't have a whole lot of retails in the right. urban places, because they steal them blind. Yeah. So well, that's, that's a part of that, too. That's a part of it, too. So well, what do we do? Before we go to break, Uncle Mo and Eric Balso will join us in the next uh, segment. Okay. Okay. No matter what you're going through, I know that you can stand. For your life is in, in his hands. Listen. Now time for Tanya's tips. This is Tanya Free. Are you doing so much that you feel like a juggler? Multitasking is the name of the game for most of us. All while neglecting to take advantage of some downtime to recharge and refresh. At some point, we all need to unplug and take some downtime to avoid being taken down. Tanya's Tips is sponsored this week in part by the campaign to elect Joe Preston for Senate. JosephEPreston.com Join Tanya Free and friends at TanyaFree.com On air, online, and on point. 
What is New Orleans Talk Network? It's today's hottest topics with an added flair. You get ready because the conversation will be hot and better yet mobile. Download the New Orleans Talk Network app available on Android, iPhone, iPad, and you can listen to us on the web at www.neworleanstalknetwork.com. Write down our talk line at 504-341-TALK. That's 504-341-8255. Interactive and worldwide, that's what we are. Join in on the real conversation and tell a friend about the New Orleans Talk Network. Join the conversation. Phone lines are open right now. Give Tanya a call at 804-321-1010 in Central Virginia and 844-321-1010 toll-free coast to coast. That's toll-free, 844-321-1010. Before we went to the break, I, let me clear something up. I wasn't trying to be hard of those that are in need. I'm just saying nobody's going to give you anything, and you got to do your part as well. That's, mm-hmm. let me, you know, just want to make it, that clear. But I understand what you're saying. Uh, I just think that we have policies that create a culture of dependency. Right. Because there is a way in, there's a way to stay on, but there's no way out. Out, right. And that's saying? the trap. Yeah, that's, that's the, the trap. trap. And then when you exclude the parent, the father in particular, mm-hmm. from, the, from the process, we can't get resources like like, right, uh, and then they'll turn around, and you can't get apartments because you're a felon. You can't right. get right. certain can't kind of certificates, right. exactly. You know, certifications. You can't get them. These are ways to keep you out. Exactly. You know, it, it forces the the, the 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 figurehead in the house to go when he comes out. Mm-hmm. In the event he does come out, mm-hmm. uh, back into a lifestyle that a lot of times got him where he was. Mm-hmm. Exactly, trying to take care of what he. Did not or couldn't take care of while he was behind bar while he was incarcerated. Mm-hmm. You're, you're, you're forcing an individual into a bad situation. Mm-hmm. Everybody doesn't make that choice. Let's get that. Be honest with you, but more often than not, that identical choice is made. And some folks make that choice and they do it and they get out and they they have a story to tell down the road. But exactly. many times, many times, it, the, the cycle just continues itself. And right, for, you, you, and for you, generations. Yeah, generational. And that's generational. even worse. And we, that's what I'm talking about trying to change. Um, Joanne, you made a very good point before we went to the break as to um, why a lot of these people in the community do not attend the council meetings and um, the school board meetings and that sort of thing in order to get the resources, mm-hmm. letting their voices be heard to get the resources that they need. Mm-hmm. I think that was an excellent yeah, point. I, I mean, that, that, a lot of that, that's called learned helplessness. Yep. Uh, they, they don't, they don't believe, look, you, if you haven't done anything up to now, I've seen different faces, same conversations, for the past couple of years to maybe a couple of decades, generation, whatever the case is, right. you're not going to do anything more than what you already want to do. And no matter who is standing here right now, you're going to do. You've already got the decision made. You're holding a meeting just so you can say we're holding we're holding a meeting exactly. and giving people a chance to talk. Right. But at the end of the day, when the vote is cast, it's the same vote that was done 
at the meeting as it was done behind the closed door before mm -hmm. the meeting even took place. And people mm -hmm. are not that stupid. They know what's going on. Right. They understand the dynamics and they say, you know what? Why get involved? You've already got the situation made. That also goes into the same pitch behind uh, the lack of the black vote mm -hmm. outside of the last two uh, presidential elections. You know, we showed up for two Super Tuesdays in a row, but that was pretty much it. And that's the exact same mentality. Why should I get involved now? You're only going to do what you've been doing, and you're going to do it in my face. Then take it to the next level. Yeah. Then you need to be on the board or be in the position mm -hmm. where you can. That's what I'm saying. I in agree. order to make any change. Because yeah. nothing's yeah. going to change if you keep doing the same thing that you're doing. Mm -hmm. That's my point. I they agree. keep. How, how do they expect their situation to change if they don't do anything, do yeah. their part? Part of that learned helplessness, they also go into the ideas of, of uh, lack of access. Right. I don't. I like. I understand what you're saying, but from that position, the idea is I don't have the. Even if I wanted to, I don't have the axe to get involved. Or if I do have that felony on my record, you know what? I've got no problem running for office if it wasn't for that rap sheet right now. Right. I've, mm -hmm. I'm getting my life together, but I don't need this dirt being drugged back up because I want to make sure my kids are going to a school where the playground mm -hmm. isn't riddled with 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 you know gun casings and and broken glass, whatever. I mean, whatever the argument may be. They if I go out there and go try to be the champion for X Y Z cause. I know good and whether you're going to dig into my background, even if I'm not living that lifestyle anymore, I may not want my next door neighbor knowing who I was mm -hmm. 10 years ago. Right. But somewhere, where some I was kind of way, you got to stop the vicious cycle from mm -hmm. generation to generation. Yes. That's my point. Oh, I agree. That's my point. Some, but, it's got to be something. But gotta, gotta, why, why are we talking about the subject anyway? Are we talking about black people, white people, and welfare? We're they talking, are welfare we're, also. Well, I know. On a I know. We, but we're talking about our people. Yeah, because I, I think it's a trap that we always talk about our people on welfare. I think that's a trap of the Republicans and white folks. Well, no, we, we got on, <laughs> we got on this subject because of the um, the president's task force um, report, task force, yeah. and the report shows that we people of color are more um, inevitable to inevitable to be incarcerated. And that's the experience that most of us have. That's how we got on this subject, and we're trying to figure out how do we change that. Getting incarcerated, don't do the crime. Okay. Well, That's, I agree with you. Got, I agree with you. I mean, it's, it's, it's a simple process. I mean, we're complaining about the, the results of people getting shot and killed over actions, but they're doing crime. Okay. And we just got to see it. And it's, it's, my thing is almost like we are like almost giving excuses to a certain extent. We okay. do more whining than anything. Okay. Like, be proactive. You're I mean, right, we always right whine too, about the Republicans, we whine about everybody. Doing stuff to us, and we don't do things for ourselves. That's that's and that's and that's the point I was bringing up. Right, we, we got to do something well, for it ourselves. Gets to the, it gets to the point too, where we're being locked up for things that other people don't get locked up for. They're right, 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 right by it, <clears throat> and we end up with our whole life tainted over something stupid, and they fill the jails up with low hanging fruit, and the other folks they'll get a tap on the wrist or they'll get an opportunity to go back and go back into their community and you go follow the sin no more, whereas my young brothers are being just shot down, beat down, demoralized, and then when you come back out here, there are no support networks. We don't have the adequate support mm -hmm. networks that, that help us in our community to help us out. And the justice system, the justice system, the criminal justice system, the social services system, the parole system, all of these things, there are billions of dollars being poured into it each day. It doesn't work. But the people that come in to deliver the services mm -hmm. to us at 5 o'clock get they, on the freeway and head back right. out of town. They have right. so attitudes. Not only attitudes, they just, they're just not jobs for us mm -hmm. serving us mm -hmm. for our benefit. Mm -hmm. We don't benefit from the billions of dollars that's being spent for social services to be delivered to us. All right, so what's the nucleus of this issue? Is it just education? Is it money? What's the bare bone reason? It's a bare bone money, reason. Money, education. Education, but so that means stuff. family? Right, and family, family. yes, that, and that's family. a big piece. Religion? That, mm -hmm. all, yes. Mm -hmm. We got a lot of problems then. We got a lot of problems. Mm -hmm. That's five <laughs> things you names on. You can't, those are big issues, so. Right, yeah. Yeah. well, let me, we do this. Let me, let me go to the phone. Real Brother is mm -hmm. on line one. Hello, Real Brother, how are you? Oh, hey, I'm doing good. Thank you guys for having me. Uh, good conversation. Uh, I just wanted to say that let's deal with some facts. I'll ask you guys a question. All right. And then you could call me crazy and dismiss me after I finish. <laughs> all right. Um, so according to the 2010 census, all right, that was the last census, 94 percent of black families are middle class. Six percent of black families are in poverty on welfare food stamps. OK, three percent of the black population is incarcerated okay according to the department of justice that's three percent all right so i'm asked here's the question if 
Only 6% of black families are on welfare, and only 3% of blacks are incarcerated. How much percentage-wise of our energy, of our dollars, of our focus should be on that small percentage, and how much should be on getting that small percentage into the middle class so they don't have to worry about being in poverty and they don't have to be worried about being incarcerated? Because we just simply disagree with you guys that black people that are poor, that have been incarcerated, they, they have to stay that way their whole life. I think Oprah can, can come out of it. I think Barack Obama could come out of it if we have a pathway to the middle class instead of focusing 100% of our efforts on keeping them poor, on I, focusing on poor. This is what you do when you're poor. We don't care about what we do when we're poor. We, we have a, a good idea of what we do when we're poor. Can you help us get into the middle class so we won't be poor? Why don't we focus any energy at all on that? Sources. And I'll, I'll Real brother, I, oh, hold up, excuse me. Uh, what are your sources? I want to look that up also. What are my sources? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's the the U.S. Census. It comes out every US 10 census. years. Okay? You might be able to find it at uscensus.gov. Okay. Okay? <laughs> uh, the, the Department of Justice does the incarceration statistics. It's doj.gov, Department of Justice. Okay, there you go. Now, a black family. What is a black family? Well, a black family, was, there's at least two adults in the home. I'm not talking about the single mother that had uh, 10 kids by 15 different dudes. Okay. I'm talking about a family. You got a grandmother, you got a, a mother, you got a mother, you got a father, you got two mothers, you got two fathers. It's a family, all right? Now, incarcerated means you in prison. I'm not talking about you got a jaywalking ticket, you owe child support. I'm talking about you inside a prison or a jail or a juvenile center or a detention center or something like that. So we're talking about very low numbers. Now, this is very important because you bring up a good point. Part of the uh, myth of white supremacy is that everybody black is on welfare. Everybody black is in prison. But we know, we know, we know that's not true. This keeps it going. This keeps, and people that hate Obama, yeah, they love these lies. Because they hate <laughs> you had Obama. You to break that in, didn't you? <laughs> so they want to they bring up this lie that everybody black, mass incarceration, it's 3% incarceration, mass incarceration. Nope. Technically, by the letter of mass, by the but mean it, but mass. It, but it is for black folk because three percent of the national population is thirty percent of us, and that no, is true. No, wrong, no, wrong. Yes, no, 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 that's not thirty. Wrong. It's not three percent of thirty percent. I mean, three percent of the black national black population. Thirty percent of the national pop. I mean, three percent of the national. That's my check. Was two million people in prison. You really think thirty percent of the national, three hundred million people are in prison? I'm saying of black folk. You really think three million people, thirty million people are in prison? Are no, you that, not no, that. In no, poverty. No, no, that. That's not what he's saying. You're not hearing you hear poverty. You didn't, you didn't, you didn't, hear, you didn't hear that. No, prison. real brother. In, in poverty, my try, friend. Try, in poverty. Try to get Miseducated, no, undereducated. Well, let, no, that, uh, that's a, you, racist made that thing up to fool people like you. Poverty is considered welfare, food stamps, poverty. Not talking about somebody who has a job and they, their family has a job, they bring them $60,000 a year. Yeah, they're not balling. But they're not in poverty. That's stupid. Well, you've the got people, you've got people out there marching today because they say people. that they are making seven thousand dollars a year, and now they want. No, I mean, they, I mean seven, and now That's they poverty. want to almost That's double poverty. that. Right. They are in poverty. Right. Okay. Right. They well, can't sustain themselves. They can't not. buy housing. The, the, okay. Well, we, everybody needs to buy a mansion. No, let's be honest and stop playing. <laughs> you are well, in let, poverty. Let me ask you this, real brother. What 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 income level do you consider to be poverty? Uh, the, the government considers an income 000. level of uh, $15,000 for one person poverty, $30,000 for a couple of two, for a family of two. So 94% of blacks have a, of black families have an income that is over $30,000 for no, a couple of two. I think Most, they said it was 70%. It was in a paper $55,000. So you're not Oprah. But to to make the argument that you're living on the you're homeless, it's just it's this is not true. And uh, I, I think it's a lot. It's a lot. It's a about, lot more. Sinister. We're talking about the mentality of these ninety percent of black people who think white people are superior. That if you come out of prison or you are are, are poor, that you can't do anything, and we have to give everybody give their money to the poor people so they can stay poor and they won't move next door to you but look we we have to stop doing that we have to stop thinking like that we have to stop hating ourselves stop lying to each other tell the truth the show's not going to go off the air if you tell the truth we still have a good show neither but we is, might solve some yours. problems at the same time neither is yours let's 
solve the problem and stop playing. Stop uh, lying. Uh, okay, real brother, okay. we got it. We okay. got it. We I got think it. Uh, what we what we look at now <laughs> are, are solutions because when I was coming up, there was no welfare until I got. Mm -hmm older or older mm -hmm. in life. That's right. We, we made it without that. You right. Know? And they didn't stop. We didn't stop having mm -hmm. premature pregnancies. Mm -hmm. We didn't have people stop, stop having people break in. But when you've got a news media that's more interested in, in creating news rather than, mm -hmm. than, 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 than uh, reporting, reporting the, news. the news, the perception of who we are. Right. Mm -hmm. And what we've accepted for ourselves. Right. And I made that point last difficult. week. Yeah. Because if you look at when, how much they reported on Baltimore mm -hmm. compared to the, the, the shootout mm -hmm. in Waco, mm -hmm. Waco was a passing story, yeah. maybe two or three days. Absolutely. And they, they yeah. spent, I mean, they spent weeks, a couple of weeks, and I know, on the Baltimore. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and then when they, the rioting was like one day, but the peaceful protesters, they bypassed all that and kept playing, mm -hmm. regurgitating mm -hmm. the, the, the rioting. And they continue to do it now. Right. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you're right. Mm -hmm. They are. Just like the reporting of, well, 30, 30 shootings in Baltimore, but nine people got killed. That's right. Out of how many million? They had nine people in Waco. Was it nine people in Waco? Mm. But they nine, got killed. 14, mm -hmm. got, right. 14 got injured, nine died. Mm. Right, exactly. And it wasn't thugs. And, and, right. none, and it, none died <laughs> from police fire, from police crossfire. Yeah. And that, that was, was in one around. day. Mm -hmm. Now, Baltimore well, in a had, couple hours. <laughs> right, in a couple hours, right. And yeah. Baltimore had 28 thing, right? uh, shootings, and I think nine died, and that's in three days. Mm -hmm. So look at the difference in the reporting. Uh -huh. You know, it, how, I said it last week, news is power. Mm -hmm. And what we believe and how we allow folks to stereotype us mm -hmm. is, is really dangerous. We start to believe that crap. We're mm -hmm. starting to believe it. And yeah. Stop mm -hmm. doing that. But uh, we can't stop talking about what are the solutions? Because there are things we can and should be doing ourselves, and some of the policies we need to be changing and, and, yeah. and making it more inclusive of families rather than single mothers. Exactly. Yeah. Real Brother, we got to take a break. Tell everybody we'll listen to your show. Thank you so much. Yes, the Real Brother Radio Show airs weeknights between the hours of 6 to 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Real Brother Radio. Network.com, RealBrotherRadioNetwork.com, because the truth has value. Thank All you right. so much. Thank you. Have a good one, Neil. Bye-bye. And sing till earth and heaven ring, ring with a
Are you searching for the best in online black radio? Then go to blacktalkradionetwork.com, helping you filter through the noise. Real talk, black talk. If you or someone you love suffers from drug addiction, now is the time to utilize your private health insurance PPO plan. If eligible, receive up to $30,000 or more in substance abuse benefits with low or no out-of-pocket cost. We are the National Treatment Network, the premier drug and alcohol treatment referral service operating 24-7. We help connect you with facilities nationwide that accepts PPO private health insurance for substance abuse. If you have PPO substance abuse coverage and you need immediate admittance to a medical detox or residential rehab treatment center, call us now. Call our live referral helpline today. The call is free. This program is not available to Medicare or Medicaid customers. Call 800-961-2730. Hey there, Big John Trimble here. Thanks to Tanya for freeing up the time to allow me to talk about the Big John Trimble Show. Heard Monday through Friday mornings, 6 to 9, right here on WCLM Radio. Yes, sir, after 57 years, I'm still on the radio and 24-7 on BigJohnTrimble.com. It all originates from our backyard studio over here in Verona. We play a wide variety of requested music from Fats Domino, Chuck Berry, and Donna Washington to George Jones, George Strait, and Loretta Lynn, along with the trivia contest and over-the-fence chats with our listeners from across the Richmond area, across the USA, and sometimes foreign countries. The Big John Trimble Show. It's the most fun you'll ever have with your clothes on. Hello, friend. I'm Theron K. Cal, a.k.a. The Real Brother, inviting you to join me for The Real Brother Radio Show, weekdays from 6 to 9 p.m. on the therealbrotherradionetwork.com. And don't forget to like us on The Real Brother Radio Show Facebook page, The Real Brother Radio Show, because the truth has value. Join the conversation. Phone lines are open right now. Give Tanya a call at 804-321-1010 in Central Virginia and 844-321-1010 toll-free coast-to-coast. That's toll-free, 844-321-1010. I'm going to go back to an issue we started out um, talking about the um, President's Task Force on the 21st Century Policing. And I told you what, what caught my attention with, is with regards to the trust between the community and the um, police officers. And uh, what do you all think? I mean, I, I think this report, uh, I mean, you could have, you didn't have to do the report. You already know what the issue is, <laughs> you know, between the, the friction between the police and the community. But how do we turn that around? Uncle Mo? Ooh, um, that's a tough one. It is. I mean, it is. It's not as easy of an answer as people think it is. I mean, because I, I was uh, looking at, at, at a few of these uh, the, the cameras, the, the phone, the camera phones. They, like I said, they before they they level the playing field. I think that's that's a big deal of it. It's accountability. When somebody knows that 
they're being watched by someone else in their actions, whether it's on the job or in the home, the community. You have a tendency to, to straighten up and act like a little bit. I think I think part of it really is that level of accountability. I don't know if it's going to be that that body camera mm-hmm. or the dashboard camera that's been in use for a while, but things have been going on and recorded on dashboards, so evidently that hasn't been that level of a deterrent just yet. Right. Um, accountability, in my opinion, has to be um, at the forefront. You've got you have to know a person's actions and their ability to uphold the law justly, not just their interpretation of the law. And I think that's what a lot of these police officers are doing. And I don't think they're giving the sufficient yeah. training. A lot of them are coming out of the military. They're coming from a a, a very a hot LZ. They're coming from a, a combat zone, wow. and they're getting into law enforcement now because it is the natural fit. Whoa! But they're they they may be carrying a lot of that. That, that, that bent up aggression, pent up aggression, mm-hmm. and they're carrying now on the job. And when mm-hmm. they see a, 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 a conflict, the way you're used to carrying out the conflict in the combat zone is going to be a little more harsh result than you would get in it, you know, in a civilian environment. Mm-hmm. Well, Justin said we should fire, they should fire the racist cops. Mm. Ooh, okay. Easier said than done. Yeah, it is. Well, I agree with you. That's you got to first. You gotta, too. Right, exactly. You got to first <laughs> identify who they are, and Number they will one. not break that line. Number mm-hmm. one, they don't need any training, man. Yeah, they don't need any training. They can shoot. They shoot black folks. Don't shoot white people. What mm-hmm. the training? What's the difference? Mm-hmm. Well, no, it's not. It's not just training the people who are there. It's training the new people coming in the doors. Yeah, but they know right from wrong. The, the, it's a selection process. No, it's they don't do value know right black from wrong. lives. That's it's the right. Right. It's, that's that's it. just, it's the selection process. If you're selecting a better quality individual coming in the door and you train them as well, you have a tendency to get a better product down the road. But if they're getting military ones who just got back from Iraq, different story. <laughs> well, they, yeah, I mean, possibly so. But well, you, know, you got you have to make. We're talking about trying to find a solution. We can we can over identify the problem all day long. That's easy for me to do. I can do that all day long. I that's, did it simply. Easy. They know right from wrong, straight up. They yeah. can shoot black folks. They don't shoot white people. I mean, they it's a simple process. And you know something? I'm I'm inclined to believe what you're saying because I was watching a report. I think I don't know where the incident happened, but it was um, a guy and this girl. They were hijacking cars and they they had a weapon. And they caught the girl, and the guy was running with the gun I in traffic, that, and he eventually dropped that. the gun and started to run it. They did not shoot him in the back. Mm-hmm. They certainly did. They, they did not shoot him in the back. They don't now, value. I think that mm-hmm. had he been black, mm-hmm. he would have been dead as a doorknob sure. right now. He, he wouldn't have been, he he been, been dead. Gun. He wouldn't have been dead running. Mm-hmm. He'd have got shot in the car. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. He, he wouldn't have had a chance to get out. Well, he wasn't in the car. They, they were hijacking cars. Some kind oh, of way okay, they got okay, out and started running in traffic and dropped the gun. And he started running, and they sh- and they didn't shoot him. They caught him, tackled him. So he didn't get That's suffocated right. or anything like that, um, and <laughs> he didn't get shot. So mm-hmm. how is it that you know we got numerous cases? You know we can talk mm-hmm. about where we've been shot in the back. I you mean, know I saw on television the other day where this man was in a car and a police officer. Um, something happened, his car stopped, and they ran up to him, they drew the guns, like, stop, get out of the car, get out of the car. And the man would not get out the car. And they were like, I'm going to shoot that. you. That and was in Fredericksburg, right. Virginia. Yeah, they right. opened exactly. the door, and he just fell Pepper, out. He was, and they pepper spray. They, uh, yeah, they, they, they but tamaged he was him and paper, pepper spray. Yeah. Right, exactly. He was sick. He was right. Mis- well, I'm thinking he didn't emergency. get out the car. He was, was he afraid to get out the car because was, they were shooting? He was in the midst of a medical emergency. Yeah. Okay. Black dude. It was a black. It was a black yeah. male. Right. Mm-hmm. They did not. They did not say exactly what his medical emergency mm-hmm. was, but they have not wavered from him saying he had a medical emergency. He was trying to get either home or to the hospital, mm-hmm. and there was a traffic incident. Mm-hmm. The car stopped, and there he is, and the police. They move in on him, and they ask see his hands, and he. They say he okay. looked. He was reaching something in the car, so they drew. They drew. They drew Always. their guns. Yeah. They, yeah. I mean, it's no mm-hmm. value. They drew their guns, mm-hmm. and uh, so when he didn't get out of the car fast enough, they they. they Pepper sprayed pepper him and they made it. Right, yeah. exactly. You know, we, thing, we can't get mad at white folks that don't value us. We don't do it ourselves. Don't you get mad at sometimes you go in the neighborhood, you see the girls twerking on the street? There's no or, that we, and, we have. You know, we look at like, damn, I get on my nerves. We have zero value. We, <laughs> I say that? As a people. <laughs> see? Oh, I can't. Yeah, it's, okay, a late, it's a little late. It's a little late. It's already in, I think. It's, yeah, 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 it's, we yeah. think it. I want in my neighborhood. Well, it's true. We do. We do. We do. So, well, go back to the 28 shootings. In Baltimore Thank this week, you. in three days, mm-hmm. you know, nine people. There you and go. They were not police shootings. Mm. It's us. Us. Yeah, but just standing around on a corner yeah. in Baltimore, every other corner yeah. in Baltimore, they black people are Pants standing around. Down. Yes. Dreadlocks. Mm-hmm. Grills. I mean, yeah, but they, they had a young white, they had a young white boy, seven years old, got shot in the butt the other day, and <laughs> I don't see anybody leading a march for him either. So it's going to happen regardless. Right. What? It's, it's not about what happened. Police shooting? No, it wasn't a police shooting. This was a, I think it was a random bullet. 
Honestly, listen, I understand it's white on white crime also because you, you shoot people that's close to you in the same neighborhood. I get mm-hmm. that. Right. Mm-hmm. But the bottom line, we are being projected a little, little louder. So Right, exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I get it. Well, well we, we the are. The majority I mean, of our projection, in my opinion, is us. Yeah, yeah. We promote that we promote that we don't mm. value ourselves. So exactly. why the heck would I value you? I know good money, you don't value yourself. Exactly. Mm-hmm. You are low on my totem pole because you're low on your totem pole. Uh-huh. That's a good point. Stand up. That's a good point. Well, we want our callers, our listeners to call 804-321-1010 or our toll-free number 844-321-1010 or text me at Tanya Free 63975 to weigh in on this conversation. Um, let me ask this question. Um, one of the things that had come up about the shootings in Baltimore is that the police, like I guess like they did in New York, where they were, you know, turning their back on Mayor de Blasio, mm-hmm. where they, they're saying that the officers are being passive mm-hmm. and that they're responding to 911 calls, but they're not engaging in any sort of community activities and that sort of thing. That, to me, is very scary. When the police department think that, okay, if you don't act or do or, you know, go along, that we are going to refrain just, you know, no more than just the basic. Well, you know, when, when you think you have that kind of power or authority. Well, see, guess where... Um, they get all that cause from the same people who cause the trouble. <laughs> <laughs> well, y'all so, people, man. Y'all well, they people. shouldn't get, but still. So I'm even, not going even in there since you don't well, like it. Well, shouldn't me. be any less protection. I don't care where the calls are coming from. So there's I mean, two really, things I see. I see no value. Then I see the fact that they have so much power. They don't have respect. They just think they can do it. I mean, just think. I mean, really. And you get reported on, and they still don't, still don't really back down from it. Well, so it's a culture too. I think, and, and, mm-hmm. and they and they can get away with, um, you know, the case in Cleveland where the officer yeah. got acquitted for manslaughter. Wow. Mm-hmm. Now I'm trying to figure out, you know, when I go back and look at that case, he didn't shoot the hundred and some he, mm-hmm. the rounds, but, but he he did like forty nine. Mm. Why did they have 49. to? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, forty nine. Yeah, forty nine. I'm, oh, I'm, but I'm trying to figure. It, it, my thing is, this, how were you <laughs> yeah, in danger? Right. How, how, how were you in danger <laughs> when everybody else stopped shooting and you jump on top of the car? How are you in danger? I'm trying to understand that. Well, I watched um, CNN last night. They said he has to get on top of the car and angle the bullet at a ninety degree angle so it can really penetrate the glass to kill. Mm-hmm. That's the reason why. Because oh. when you shoot it from you know from you know from the from the street, it can ricochet. Okay, but don't you think the people are already dead after having well, yes. almost yeah, they want to make well, they, sure. fifty yeah. some already? Nine don't, lives. Need, yeah. don't don't need you going to court telling your side of the story. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's how they get off. Yeah, do right. not do not Trayvon. need you going to yeah. court yeah. telling your side of the mm-hmm. story. Let's this needs to end here, and mm-hmm. we'll just hey look. You may take a little vacation. We're going to have to write this up. Yeah. It's yes. going to be ugly for a little while, but look, yeah. mm-hmm. we'll take care of you and your family mm-hmm. when it's over with. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. We, yeah. Hey, we're going to have to say we're cutting you off. You mm-hmm. understand that? And I'm going to need you to look like you're mad about it, too. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, you're going to be all right. And that's, to me, that's what yeah. gives them power mm-hmm. you know, to do what they do, whether they're going to turn their backs on the mayor or be passive in their policing, right. whatever the case may be. This is what gives them power and authority because when they are not, um, I guess, convicted uh, or charged mm-hmm. in, in, yeah. in, in, like I said, Eric Garner, oh, uh, we'll see how things turn out with mm-hmm. Freddie Gray. Yeah. You know, that's going to be interesting. See right. how that well, I like them being passive. That means mm-hmm. less people get killed. Mm-hmm. Think about it. They don't come to neighborhoods, you can't get killed. Yeah, but you don't want them being mm-hmm. passive. Mm-hmm. If it's your neighborhood, they need to come to and do but, some, you know. Oh, no, that's in Baltimore. I'm good in my neighborhood. Yeah, true. Well, how you going to be? How you going to pick and choose? Because my, we I don't keep, I, keep, I live in a safe neighborhood. Yeah, right. I don't, I don't live Eric, that is wrong. Yeah. It's wrong. Right. Get out. Yes, that's, 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 Eric. No. That's, that's wrong, <laughs> right, Eric. We don't call the police. <laughs> no, no one's here living in those neighborhoods. We try. Whatever. That is wrong. Wait a minute. Let them sit in that little group and shoot each other. But that's what we're talking about. Less welfare, less... You know, insurance, I mean, but Eric, that's jail. Until, it, until, it happens, until it happens that's on your block. Called. Yeah, and I get mad, then I'm upset. <laughs> until it happens well, on your block. Well, that's my point. It's, it's we, a need, we need to You know, care black folks don't venture out to nobody else's block. They say, you, you can have a white neighborhood right beside them. They will not go across that street. You know. But we need to care about crickets. our brothers and sisters that, yeah, are, that are, because we, we, pray for we have all, you pray for <laughs> we have all, I don't know about you, but I've been there. I have. I've been, I've been, uh, yeah, I did. I didn't, I didn't grow up with, you know, silver spoon in my mouth. Yeah, and don't say, out, and don't though. say, well, and that's my point. Being able to get out and showing others how to get out. Mm. A lot of folks get out. Come on, Erin. A lot, I mean, a lot of people get out. A lot of people get out. You I, mean, ain't, yeah, I know you weren't born on no silver spoon. Come on, then. Oh no, I wasn't born like that though. Mm. I, you know, I wasn't born 
Well, the rustics well, we, won't either. We, we never knew. <laughs> that, we never saw a police in our neighborhood yeah. where right. we grew up. Right. Or, but we had pride. Yeah. You didn't want to get yeah. in trouble. Yeah. You didn't want to mess yeah. your family's family. name up. Yeah, that's right. exactly yeah. what we did. And, but you know what yeah. that goes back yeah. to? That goes back to family. Uh -huh. In my yeah. opinion, that goes back yeah. to family. And this is how you was raised. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. that goes back to family. And I think that goes back to family and 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 overall for the mere fact that, and I said this last week, my father would not allow us, um, being in prison was not on the agenda. Right. You were not going to be a menace to society. Mm -hmm. no, Some hell or high water. It's not even a discussion. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. exactly. If you go there, you're going to stay there. Mm -hmm. I'm not coming to get you. No, you prefer <laughs> to be there than have them to discipline you. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, so that, that was the thing. Being, mm -hmm. being a menace to society, you would mm -hmm. not be. And I think that if, if you had that sort of mentality or that mindset, that maybe we'd have less of our you know, brothers and sisters incarcerated or have a different perspective on life. But you it, know what I've noticed? Family, the reason why some areas are have the problem is because the mother would pick up the telephone and call the police on the husband or the father or whatever. They love calling the police in their neighborhoods. And also, it's cool to be negative. It's cool yeah. to date a man in jail. It's cool uh -huh. to watch reality when TV shows. When did that shows. get to be cool? Look at, look at your TV show. It's cool that they, they mess with guys who have a lot of girls. Mm -hmm. I mean, get, it's cool to watch soap operas mm -hmm. and they see people cheating. They, they date for a little while to get married and they cheat on each other and they get order. back together. Oh the my whole goodness. system is crazy. See, mm -hmm. order, order takes energy. We need the Lord. Order takes energy. <laughs> it, takes, it, take, it takes a lot of energy to keep things together. So the easiest thing you do is conserve your energy How and, and, do we is change to let things just mentality. relax and let it go. Mm -hmm. You all are stressing me out. I can't I just can't buy it. I it just can't cool. comprehend that. I really can't. I can't get a girl now. I'll be married all the guys in jail. Uh -huh. I'm, they love I'm serious. See, you, Look at the videos. Guy come out of prison. Hey, hey, it's There's all a some waiting for that. Yeah. 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 I'm waiting for yeah. my man. Your your inability to comprehend what's going on does not change what's going on. The truth ain't got no friends. It's gonna be exactly mm -hmm. what it is until something changes. There, until something Ooh, changes, and it won't change if we don't make a move. My cousin was in jail for twenty years. Right, he just got out three years ago. He had women coming from New York and, and Atlanta, pick him up, take him to the hotel, do the business, and take him back to jail. <laughs> God, to he was calling me on the phone on like Twitter, <laughs> not not Twitter, but uh, those dating sites, meeting women. Yeah, they got privileges These like sisters. that. These sisters, these black women, they, they don't, they don't <laughs> want them, they want them better. Uh, they've been, I mean, they've been uh, graded for years. Uh, Black women, come okay, on. Okay, yeah. okay. Well, we want to say happy birthday to Eric, who has a there birthday coming up, and also to giving. Antoinette Bell of this week. <laughs> oh, we yeah. got a tribute for you, one of your songs. Yeah. Okay. Huh? In my own world, I love me. In my own world, I found me. In my own world, I know me. It's something about me. And every day, gonna make my mark in a special way. I love me, you should try to have. Just follow me in my point of view. I said, in my own world, I love me. In my own world, I felt me. In my own world, I felt me. In my own world, I know me. The way I walk, watch the way I talk, watch the way I do my thing, watch the way I move. I want you to notice me and all the things I do. I know you'd be surprised, all the things you can do. This week, we are getting reports that Memorial Day weekend saw an uptick in shootings in urban areas. Those opposed to the current movements that have arisen against police terrorism are seizing upon these reported shootings in an attempt to discredit those organizing against police brutality today to suggest that somehow black people do not value the lives of black people taken by other black people. This, of course, is a fallacy easily disproven by the decades-old Stop the Violence campaigns, which I credit with the decrease in violent crimes over the same time. 
time period. Of course, these facts do not matter to those that want to discredit movements that have arisen against the police state that has always plagued the black and non-white communities in the United States. It's like a broken jukebox that plays the same old song every year and by now should be expected from right-wing racist suspects who use these reports of shootings in urban areas to suggest that these shootings somehow justify the police terrorism plaguing many of these communities. Crime in high poverty areas has nothing to do with the 455 confirmed kills by police in 2015 so far. An unknown amount of beatings and tasings and the patterns and practices of excessive force being found at police departments across the country by the Department of Justice. Two of the cities being highlighted by corporate media are Chicago and Baltimore, both of which are experiencing uprisings by poor people against police brutality and systemic racism. Other than having high poverty zones that breed dysfunction, they also have something else in common. Both cities have moved to cut funding for education, thus closing schools, but they have found the money to build more prisons. Instead of spending millions to address the underlying issues of violence and crime by providing employment opportunities and a solid education, the ruling classes and their political proxies in these cities are spending millions of dollars to imprison even more people and make them new slaves for the modern prison slavery system. To keep people distracted from those engineering all the poverty, all the crime, all the killing, all the enslavement via prisons, the goal is to shift the focus away from the slave catchers, also known as police and on to the less than 1% of 43 million black people who may or may not be behind the killings in these areas. This is par for course in a society that is built around the false notion of white supremacy. This has been Scotty Reed with your Black Talk Radio commentary. Visit us on the web at blacktalkradionetwork.com. I told you, sweetheart, I'm voting for Delegate Joe Preston on Tuesday, June 9th, to be our Democratic Party nominee for the 16th Senate District. It's true what they say about Rosalind Dance. She's a diner, a Democrat in name only. Honey, we've been married for over 20 years, and I have never seen a Democrat who is ashamed to put Democrat on their campaign signs. Have you seen Rosalind Dance blue campaign signs put everywhere? She doesn't have the word Democrat on any of these signs. I'm voting for Joe Preston, too, a trusted Democrat. Authorized and paid for by Joe Preston. This is Tanya Free. If it's Monday, it's time for Let's Get Busy with your host, King Salim Kalfani. 4 to 6 p.m. here on the heart and soul of the city, WCLM 1450 a.m. Kick off the week with KSK, Commonwealth Consultation, LLC, for two power pack hours of news you can use. Feature guests, cutting edge commentary, and more. Let's Get Busy with King Salim Kalfani every Monday at 4. The story you are about to see is true. 
Know the truth when you vote. Delegate Betsy Carr voted against Medicaid expansion. Delegate Betsy Carr voted to take money away from our schools. Delegate Betsy Carr did put a bill in to give tax exemption for certain light bulbs. Delegate Betsy Carr did visit businesses in Turkey when she hasn't visited businesses on Hall Street in the 69th District. Ask her or go to votesmart.com and check her voting record. Is this what you really want? Delegate Betsy Carr is out of touch with the 69th. WCLM 1450 AM Highland Springs, Richmond The soul of the city is WCLM 1450 AM I, Jerry Rawlinson, am a job creator and a community builder. As a business owner for 20 years and registered nurse for 33 years, I have the educational, business management, and leadership skills to form partnerships and to represent the 63rd District. I will fight for more businesses and jobs, health care, SOL reform, and affordable housing. I'm an experienced leader and decision maker. I ask for your vote on June 9th. Vote Jerry Rawlinson. Paid for and authorized by Elect Jerry Rollison Campaign. Sean and Vinny of Harvard University. If any, uh, Vinny and Sean known her to party to dawn. Ah, ah, they go do wop, do wop, do wop, do wop, do wop, do wop. All right, thank you. I want to see the people, not signs. Yes, I get a groove when I look at you. Join the conversation. Phone lines are open right now. Give Tanya a call at 804-321-1010 in Central Virginia and 844-321-1010 toll-free coast-to-coast. That's toll-free, 844-321-1010. I want to thank Scotty Reed for the Black Talk radio commentary. We are on the same page today. So thank you, Scotty. We appreciate it. Um, I'm going to read the comments before we go to the next um, topic. Antoinette? Jesse said, community policing and more officers of color. Lee said, good cops need a way to anonymously report bad cops. Tamara said, prosecution of bad cops would pierce the blue wall. Yeah, that's, I agree with that one. Uh, Tammy said, we need police officers in the community who are from the community and live in the community. Hmm. That's there interesting. What do you think? Now, I've seen some police in the community <coughs> living, and they had an incentive that if you move into the city of Richmond, you get a discount on your home. 50% yeah. discount on the home, matter of fact. Yeah, then really? teachers and officers offered that. But you got some of those same cops who, who uh, uh, work in the community where they are. They, if they know where the problems are, or like the local drug dealers are, mm-hmm. that's not but an ATM sale. machine. Oh. And I know kids, I've worked with children yep. who have told me this. Wow. And women love men in uniforms. Uh oh. Sorry. I don't, I don't know how you connect those two today. dots, but I, mean, I, I agree you with you. You ever heard reports of the guy actually dating women? In the yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what? You're, you're, you're absolutely yeah. correct. Hey, y'all are you're absolutely correct. So, my goodness. Mm-hmm. So, well, to, all, to they, all the naives out there, trust right. me, it ain't, there's yeah, not the, the answer but you think, think about it is. If ain't you were a police that. officer, would you move into a community like in Baltimore? For a 50% discount on the house, and I don't have a home just yet, and I'm fresh out of school, quite possibly, or I'm fresh home from the military. I have very little going for me. I don't have a family going thing, anything like that, but I can get my little bit of credit straight and I can get a home that's worth two hundred thousand dollars for under a hundred grand. Uh-huh, yeah. You know what? It's not that bad of a deal. Okay. And if I'm not a hundred percent up top, as long as my neighbors beside me don't know that, well, okay. who's gonna say Okay, let's 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 flip the script then. A lot of us, if we weren't able to get that, you know, a, a discount, I mean cheaper homes in, in those communities mm-hmm. and we're not living in them. There's a reason why. Okay. All right. You got Case you got one you got one house in that neighborhood like that. The other fifteen twenty are, are not moving. <laughs> there. There's a reason why those houses don't move. Don't, 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 this, there's there's sweat equity that goes into these homes. Mm-hmm. Like I said, the the answer that people want, you know, it sounds golden, but mm-hmm. there's a whole lot more behind the scenes that oh, most yeah. folks have are just not privy to. Right. And when it comes out, the, the answer is usually completely different mm-hmm. than what it was when it was on paper being presented in front of a crowd mm-hmm. behind that closed door. It's 
something different. Right, exactly, exactly. Okay, Justin Morris said, independent prosecutor in all cases. I know that it seems to be working in Baltimore, but we need consistent policies for independence and civilian oversight. Okay. Mm -hmm. ain't work yet in Baltimore. Agree, but independence can be bought. Mm -hmm. Okay, and Lawrence said, more (laughs) officers of color. Okay. Hey, the worst Um, one. Mm. See that one beat the gap in Baltimore? Whoopsie. Was. Oh. <laughs> ooh, I got to stop. I was like, almost, I almost went that far. FCC. Y'all almost caught me. Just mm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Baye, Baye Campui, our friend, um, I'm quick to blurt out the simple answer of stop killing and beating up POC, people of color, but I want to be careful not to uh, jock uh, vertical solutions since the problem is larger than bad cops. Mm-hmm. There is a need to consult shifts in how people think of so-called um, colored folks. Okay. All right. I, I agree. Mm. Uh, Gary A. Johnson said, what is needed is a change in policy of police department across the nation, referring to police profiling, a change in sentencing to bring true justice and fairness to our laws, um, environment uh, laws, uh, pers- prosecution of police and other public officials who misuse our laws to create a racial, unequal environment in our country. Officers um, who kill innocent people should be treated with the full measure of law and not released from their crimes. Mm-hmm. And that's what is not happening. And, sure. you know, we can't seem to, they, I mean, I just don't understand, sure. once yeah. again, the officer in Cleveland, how he got acquitted. I, I, I'm just still justice, baffled. Just justice, is baffled. Not, justice is not blind. It that's never right. ha- For us, it never has been. Mm-hmm. But again, as long as the officer feels he's threatened, he can use deadly force. That's, right. that's it. That's it. Yeah. If they say it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's yeah. the mindset. If mm-hmm. I feel like a woman, if I she think I'm coming on to her, she's going to think, I'm, mm-hmm. you know, I'm a jerk or a pervert. Mm-hmm. And it's her perception. Or a predator. Yeah, and yeah. that's all. That's one hundred percent her perception. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And as long as she knows how to articulate that exactly. well, you are going to lose everything you got behind yeah. attorney yeah. fees just to beat the case. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that that. It's I, not I always. That. It's not always the way it seems. Uh-huh. But hey, ninety percent of reality is perception. perception. The way you see it is what's mm-hmm. real to you. Exactly. What if your vision is blurred? That's true. All right. Yes, that's the point. Well, let me ask you all this. So, with all that said, do you all think that there um, the officers in um, Baltimore? Will be charged. It she should be. Nope. I mean, considering oh, considering the officer. <laughs> oh, six of them. Yes. I mean, <laughs> well, justice will be served and put yes. it that way. Uh, yes. I mean, <laughs> considering the one in Cleveland was acquitted. This like makes me real way. skeptical now, and and only thing that gives me hope is um, Marilyn Mosby. Uh, that's no, a, that's I the only thing that gives <laughs> me hope. Attorney? Yeah, she's a. Well, she's been appointed, attorney. and yeah. I yeah. I but think the best that. Attorneys. There's a figurehead. She needs some. She needs some bulldogs. Well, she not came out law. and spoke. She yeah, was forced, I think she's I very think transparent. All black women force when they talk. <laughs> Whether they got the weight to do it or not, they get it. Yanker it across the line. That's right. Yanker it across the line. Yeah, that that neck roll. That's it. Shoot, finger wagging. Come oh, on, man. Are y'all trying to call her angry black woman? I did not know how to neck roll. I'm just saying. You said angry black woman. I didn't say that. I do not know how to neck roll. I'm just saying. I do not know how to neck roll and shit. Your eyes rolling in. No, I did not yeah. know how to do that either. <laughs> you know how to get up in that seat and raise your shoulders, though. Yeah. Or make okay. a phone call. It's uh-huh. Just about your point. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Whether it's real okay. or not. Okay, okay. okay. Y'all losing None focus less. here. Uh, Y'all losing focus I don't here. Think, yeah. I don't think that the... Uh, I, I think they're going to end up serving these guys up. You think? And I don't think it's going to be because justice is being served. I think it's going to be in an attempt to save that city. Yeah. And yeah. to deliver on... Uh, it's, it's kind of like you, you, you're throwing a flag on a, on a missed call because you blew one earlier. Now I'm going to hit you with this one. You know what? They've dropped the ball so many times around the country, and you're in Baltimore, which is another version of D.C.'s Chocolate City. Uh, you can't really afford to have this city go up in smoke wow. the way it is being Thank threatened you. to go up in smoke right mm-hmm. now. You can't afford to go out there and threaten martial law on a city like Baltimore like you've Actually, you've made an attempt to to threaten him with now. You're going to have to give up one to get one. This is going to be one, in my opinion, that they are going to give up. Whether she's good at her job and she you know, nails it all the edges down and, and really sticks the case out there to where it's undeniable, or even she just plainly and blatantly drops the ball, I still think they're going to serve these guys up because something a, a statement has to be made. And if not, mm-hmm. you know, you're looking at, 
the, the the beginnings of what could potentially be a very failed attempt at a a, 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 a poorly run race war almost mm. in this well, country. Let me ask this question. How is it that the driver got the highest charge of all of them? Mm. Um, he black. They're, well, they're, if, they're, if the was argument, he black? If the argument, yeah, he is. Is, if the argument okay. is he got his back <laughs> broke in the van or he in, in the wagon as opposed to the, mm. the, uh, the quote unquote rough yeah. ride. The person coming in the vehicle would be the one catching that charge. That's right. Did it look like that from the video? It looked like his know. back was already broken. I mean, from the fact that they were dragging him and tossed him in and couldn't seatbelt him in. Okay. That to me tells me that his back, his back was already broken. So I'm that trying can be to argue in court. You can't prove mm-hmm. that. Well, you're looking I mean, at the, I'm talking about looking at the videotape. Yeah, no, but you can't look at the videotape until the man's back is broken. I'm not. Well, I'm not how, can you, how can you I'm prove it? How can you argued, prove though. it was doing the drive then? You doing the ride? You can't. That's my That's point. That's why they're getting if, off. Y'all don't get you it. You can't. I mean, there's, there, 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 are, there are blind spots. Too? You can't. Man, this, we're talking about a murder case here, so we're not looking at a, a, a preponderance of the evidence. That's civil stuff. We're talking about what did the autopsy pretty much say undeniable. Today? The yeah. autopsy are going to say his back was broken. I don't know, how did they say it And was what broken. it may be likely to, but they can't say this man's back was broken as a result of him being in the back of a paddy wagon that was driving uh, recklessly. I thought autopsists yeah. could t- t- um, find that out. You know, like when a body... They are, but they're, yeah. they're, they're, there are holes in certain things. They can tell oh. when somebody got a bullet wound in them and where it went in and where it went out. But, they but can't. as a result of his back got broken, as a result of him having a ride in the back of a truck... That's kind of far-fetched. Right? Well, well, I'm You're thinking, reaching a little bit. And yeah, I think it is. I think it that. is, too. But I'm thinking, I'm thinking that it's a setup no. for the driver who's black. Well, if anybody, if anything, he may take the fall. Oh, I can see and him the other, and the other five, <laughs> And the other five walking. Because like I said, how did he get the, the, the highest charge? It's my, it's mm, what I can't no. understand. If the, black, if, the, if the black driver goes down and nobody else goes down, the city of Baltimore is up in smoke again. Uh-huh. So there has to be a way where everybody goes home happy. Internal investigators have to be saying, you know what? We didn't get it right, but we feel comfortable going in front of the crowd with the microphone and saying, hey, this is what we got. Five years. The police department is going to have to take the bullet on this one. The community has to go home saying, you know what? We didn't win, but we didn't lose. Mm-hmm. And there's only one scenario behind that. Everybody's got to take a little bite of this sandwich. Mm. If not. You think they'll have to be happy with five years for them? Heck no. Okay. No. So the, commu- mm-hmm. no mm-hmm. the, com- the, com- the community mm-hmm. want, wants heads to roll. They don't, yeah. want, they don't want a little cut. They want mm-hmm. blood in the street. Well, I mm-hmm. think about this. Yeah, definitely. Because, I mean, think about the um, situation, the teachers <laughs> in Atlanta. where well, they were getting looking at 20 oh, years. Yeah. Now, how are they going to get 20 years? For changing tests and that sort of thing, you got to make sense. Right, and Recall. then they found they dropped the charges, right? On the some, teachers, some, yeah, some, some. On a couple. Yeah. But then you got Not officers that actually, you know, <laughs> injured and caused a man to die. Yeah. And, you know, talking five years, no, that's not enough. Awesome. But again, you got to think, I mean, the charge with a black driver, is it first degree, second degree murder? What is it? I think it was first. I have to look it up. I know he got yeah, the highest you, one. Ah, you, first grade, you got to. I, 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 I think the other ones. I think the other ones. I think the other ones got manslaughter. Yeah, that's, if, if he's mistaken. driving, it's like, if it's it's manslaughter. Yeah, you can get off, right? Yeah, involuntary yeah. manslaughter. You're not going to jail for that. Yeah, you're not going to jail. for that. Uh, uh, involuntary manslaughter does go to jail. Really? You do, but you absolutely. Not a long time. No, you're not going to jail for that. Check it out. What? I mean, you can jail time for, but I'm telling you, you could do more than five years for involuntary manslaughter. That's probably the Well, like you said, you know, it's. It's. I think the. It's possible to driver. Because I, I still can't understand. I'm going to look it up during the break, right. so we'll be right back. You know, Gene, I want to know why she's getting funky on me. You know what I'm saying? Is it a real true fact that she's getting funky on me? Man, look, listen. I'm going to be the other G. Let's do it. Why? So nice, holy moly, you know your loving is getting 
What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? It's your boy, William Andre Brimley III, and we're here this week to talk to you on Will Wednesdays about balance. Look, when it's all said and done, nothing in life ever falls without first losing its balance. I'll say that for you one more time. Nothing in life ever falls without first losing its balance. So what you need to remember about balance is that it's a combination of ups and downs. It's peaks and valleys. It's highs and lows. It is light and darkness. Trust and believe that, you know, if you want to make a right, yeah, there is a left out there for you to make. But balance is the best thing about life. So when when you are dealing with all the sunshine and rainbows know that there's some storms around the corner know that when you're on your high horse there's a low point that you can very 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 soon reach but understand that balance is key to your life so whenever you're dealing with whatever you're going through just trust the balance i am will you can find me at www.bucksandbanks.com and you can find me on instagram and twitter at cold winners that is c-o-l-d-w-i-n-n-e-r-s and make sure you catch us each and every week at www.tanyafree.com Peace. Peace. You're listening to AMFM 247, music you love from the 40s, 50s, and 60s. Best talk radio all day and every day. Doc, you gotta give it to me straight. All right. Because I'm dying here. I mean, take a look at this letter from the IRS. Oh, my. This is killing me, Doc. I tell you, it's killing me. Cheer up, my friend. Huh? The tax doctor is here. Uh, my diagnosis tells me that you're going to be just fine. Uh, really? The tax doctor will not rest until we find you the best possible tax settlement. Really, Doc? Guaranteed. If the IRS claims you owe them $10,000 or more in business or personal back taxes, call a tax doctor right now. We could save you up to 75% if you qualify. Guaranteed or you pay nothing. Call right now for free details. 800-918-7169. 800-918-7169. 800-918-7169. That's 800-918-7169. Join the conversation. Phone lines are open right now. Give Tanya a call at 804-321-1010 in Central Virginia and 844-321-1010 toll-free coast-to-coast. That's toll-free, 844-321-1010. I want to thank Andre Bremich for Will Wednesday commentary. Uh, we're going to try to find some balance in this conversation here. So I want to um, <laughs> let our listeners that have, we've had some technical difficulty and that we are um, online again, so wherever the, the problem is. So if you didn't catch all of the show, you can definitely catch our podcast today at TanyaTanyaFree.com. Okay. Uh, we were talking about uh, what the driver got, and we looked it up, and he is being charged with second-degree murder. The others are being charged with manslaughter. So that's what I'm saying. I don't understand how they, you know, how they, how that is done. How they, you know, he got the highest charge. I just don't understand. When looking at the video, looks like he was injured 
during the takedown from the bike, and they were dragging him in the van and tossed him because if he wasn't, they should have been able to put him in a seat belt. That's mm-hmm. the way it looked to me. So, but I'm quite sure you're gonna have you know somebody truly a, a, a good attorney you know mm-hmm. that's gonna argue that oh, yes. all the way. You know, I to the see, ends just, of the earth. We just did a little while ago. Yeah, y'all did. Mm-hmm. Y'all did during the break. So. I, don't, right. I don't have the credentials to do that, but yeah, I can, I can cast doubt. <laughs> Casting doubt on something, it, it's not that hard to do. That's right. And that's all you need in this type of case. Mm-hmm. And if I can cast doubt. That's true. If that I is, can, if well, I that's what happened. That's happened. What, that's what happened to the Cleveland case that's because happened, that's what happened they case. could not. They could not verify that his he actually shot. His shots actually killed. Mm-hmm. The right. driver and the passenger, and that's what that's what any good attorney knows. The the, the number one thing: the, can I get you to say, mm, I don't know? Done. You can't get him there. Mm. You can't get him. Okay, if by that's law, the case, by law you cannot touch if the that's man. The case, if you know for sure, then that's that's the problem because sure. they're gonna all perhaps for the most part, what you just said, gonna walk because you cannot say for sure that it was done with the driver. Or if it was done when they, when he was taken down, other than a video way it looks mm-hmm. to me. So. I haven't. I haven't. They, they showed. I saw one little piece of video clip about the the drive, but that was. I think that was leaving like from the scene and just mm-hmm. going down that block. But Baltimore is a pretty uh, heavily surveillance city, to my understanding. They, you can you yes. can track you can track that thing going back and forth where it's going from. But, but can you, know. you actually injure someone to that point Mm-mm. in a in in, a, in just a ride? Uh, I don't know. And he can say, well, I, didn't, I went back there to just put him in the truck, so I didn't know if he was in uh, uh, seat belt or whatever. I'm the, I'm the driver. They put him in the back, and I drove off. Mm-hmm. But, and, and they're going to and, and say, hey, look, you know so what? Get the, a fee the, from the, it. The, like deal, the deal is you were the one commandeering the vehicle, and, and the officers on the scene are going to say his back was not broken. When we put him in yeah. that van, he was okay. How do you know that? Well, I, I don't know for sure, but neither do you. Remember that the young black guy said his, he was hitting his head against. Uh, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Then he recanted it though, because these boys around the neighborhood said, "Hey, don't do that." That's right. <laughs> but don't, it, snitch. That, that, don't snitch. That could have <laughs> that could have easily been you, buddy. <laughs> I know. Could have easily been you, buddy. Yeah, yeah. 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 Look, well, you know oh. what happened? I really I can, I can I didn't really look at her. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah. Quick and in a hurry. I had blood in my eyes, so I didn't really see it like I thought I did. You know. So, well, Lisa said it would all come out in the trial. No, it won't. Uh, maybe. Yeah, but it all come out in the trial. You, you don't think yeah. it will? Information is gonna be suppressed before it gets to trial. Mm-hmm. But I still, but I'm still, because I'm gonna stick to my, I'm gonna stick to my original statement. I'm gonna stick to my guns. The city of Baltimore is going to have to yeah. serve somebody up to get this thing to where the city is not going to literally implode on itself. Now, keep in mind now, it has to go to the grand jury, right? Federal. No, I don't grand know. Jury. Grand jury. Grand jury. Get indicted. Get arraigned. Grand jury, so that's gonna be secret. Y'all see? Yeah, that stuff doesn't come out, huh? That stuff doesn't. No, I'm saying that's where some of the cases stop. Yeah, like Eric Garner and stuff. That stops. That's the. That's where they stop. They can pick their own people to go on the grand jury. Mm -hmm. Well, I I hope that. um, I'm gonna be highly disappointed if. And when um, is the case gonna start in here? If they get acquitted, I know I'm not not going to Baltimore anytime soon. I know that. Try not to. They got the American African American fest coming up. I gotta go to that. We're wow. supposed to go to the crab boat. Oh, see? Uh, uh, see, everybody got their purse. <laughs> Sorry, y'all. Once let me, again, y'all let me get my back to the community. That's what yes. I'm saying. Not, I got to support. Not okay. going I, I, to I'll, Baltimore. I'll give you a couple of dollars. I may pay your way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Represent yeah. on my behalf. That's right. Mm-hmm. I'll live Represent on my behalf. Mm-hmm. So, well, you know, that, that's just interesting. So we'll, we'll, we'll see. Right. Um, I just hope that um, it will be some peace with regards to the officers and the community. Like mm-hmm. I said, the police officers are now are being passive, and with all the murders and everything that are going on, it's really a very unfortunate situation when you need an officer and they just doing the bare minimum. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. you know, none mm-hmm. of us want to live in a neighborhood or area like that, especially mm-hmm. if it's a high crime area. So, well, then maybe they stop the crime since they know the mm-hmm. police aren't coming in there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. no, that means I can do what I want because there, right. there is still a very evil, negative element in certain neighborhoods. Right. Exactly. So, if I know the cops aren't coming through here, it's a free for all now. Right. Right. It's, it's going to be and the whole, and, and and the whole neighborhood. The whole neighborhood has this no snitching policy, so mm-hmm. I can do what I want. Anybody go say anything? Hey, right now, if you're thinking on that level, it's time to get this money. And then yeah. so maybe everybody can come out and 
do what they're supposed to do then. Okay, like, like somebody said, we're living in a fantasy world with yes, that, yes. that thought. Mm -hmm. So, well, mm -hmm. let's, let's shift to something else. Um, Bernie Sanders is getting ready to run. He made an announcement, I think it was yesterday. Mm -hmm. I think it was yesterday. And one of the things he, he brought up, and, I, and it was interesting, I don't know if he said it yesterday or, or I've heard him say it before, that the middle class in America is shrinking. Mm -hmm. Now, do you all agree with that? Yes, because he said something like, I don't agree with that, but he was saying like it was shrinking because of the income, like thirty-five thousand to seventy thousand. Well, I what, the rep like what I was the report that I got, um, yes. middle class is considered anywhere from thirty-five thousand to a hundred thousand yes. a year. Yes, yes, that's correct. So, that's right, that. right, mm -hmm. from thirty-five thousand to a hundred thousand a year, mm -hmm. and the reduction is as a result of declining wages yes. and the cost of living. Yeah. And I, and I agree with that. I mean, I think the uh, middle class is, is shrinking. And then I was reading another report. We are not considered middle class. We are on the lower end. People of color is on, are on the lower end of that spectrum. Hmm. Do you agree with that? Feels right to I me. Don't, I, yeah. don't, well, <laughs> I, I just looked I it don't up. It's 41, 41, 42 for uh, medium incomes for blacks. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, I don't and know. for I single women with, with children, it's 20, 25. And it depends on the number yeah. of children. Yeah. Right. And, and the report says seven out of 10 Americans are struggling with their finances um, because of debt and a lack of mm. savings and income and that sort of thing. And my question is, how far would this go before it turns around? You mm. know, I mean, if you got the middle class, and we were talking about people of poverty. You know, how close are we, you know, are we closer to poverty than we are to actual middle class? I mean, we were, you know, on our high horse saying, okay, we don't want to, you know, be associated. But the question is, we, we just a couple pennies away. And that's mm -hmm. something to think about. It really is. So that's why I said we can't, you know, throw, you know, shade on our brothers and sisters that are in poverty. And when we are close to being in an area where, you know, not too far from that, that neighborhood. Yeah. So well, I mean, if, Eric, if I was to go to the ghetto, I mean, go to the projects, I'm not going to commit crime. We, okay, we're not so, talking I mean, about well, that. Well, yeah, but um, you, you make it seem like if I lose my job and I have to, my results are to go to that neighborhood, I can still be, have some pride and have value in my life. Mm -hmm. That's Until what they you mean. get back on your yeah. feet. And I've that known people crazy. who have done that. <laughs> they had hard time falling on hard times. Mm -hmm. They said, I'm going in, but I'm leaving out. Yeah. And I've seen right. them do Mission it. Goal. Right. Yes. And, and that's a, actual, a mindset. Yes. Mm -hmm. They say poor, I mean, being poor is a mindset. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. yeah. I because agree with when, that. when we were growing up, we didn't know we were poor. No. We had everything that I you agree. imagined. So. Yeah. And yeah. how, how so do I'm, we change those persons that do not think in that fashion? That's, mm. that's one of the reasons I think that I hate when I see um, media and they interview people that look like they're going to be <laughs> poor for the rest of their lives. Yeah. Oh. You know, have that, have that mindset, you know, that, okay, this is the way it is and this is the way it's going to be. But you know what is amazing since I'm in the location over on, um, where I am? I've seen these people who we call poor and they don't have food. They have a lot of food to eat. Mm -hmm. and. And I'm, I'm not understanding why they always saying that the people don't have anything to eat. Yeah, you know, yeah. it just doesn't make sense because everybody's coming through giving food and they all go and hog the food, yeah. whether they need it or not. Mm -hmm. So it's just amazing to see yeah, what it keeps store, people You can go wrong with a dollar store. Yeah. <laughs> you know? right. Oh, my goodness. You get a, whole, you talk, you, get a whole meal for a dollar. You, you ain't never been to a dollar store in your life. You ain't never been to a dollar store in your life. I go in and buy cleaning stuff. I do. I go to the dollar store. I do. Yeah. I, I well, see, we ain't I all have, bougie I, on the I show. Have, I, you don't want bougie on the show. <laughs> I know. I have Shut a dollar store. Shut up, Whole Foods. <laughs> <laughs> Trader Joe's. Wait, can you oh, oh, no, no. Uh-uh. No, no, I will not be going to Wagmans. No question about that. I, I have family members that, that live there. And, and yes, I, I've been told about it. I'm like, I'm you mean to tell them. me you can't even buy anything? I mean, it is. I've I'm never been in it, but I've been talking. But look, but think about where they're building it, though. Yeah. So when you think about where they're building it, that's telling us we can't even go It's not intended to be put somewhere for your access. Because right, again, exactly. they said so we steal everything there is, no bus, there is no bus going out there with it, to my mm. knowledge, that where it's going to be, right? right. That's right. Yeah. There's, no, there's no plan to put a bus right out there either. You, know, exactly. you, are, you are actually accurate. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Again, remember, retail said they aren't coming in where they will have to pay 
people to steal. <laughs> you, we, we just steal everything out of the stores. Don't say we do. We don't. Not yes, all of yes, us. We no, do. no, no, we don't. Oh, the Joanne, is no, at the dollar no, store Joanne, I can't get Joanne every that. Every day. That's right. Wait, right. Willie Blue Grass. You can't get Chinese food. That's you can't right. put your money through a glass, uh -huh. through a hole. Yes, and when you go to the whiskey store, I had to go for one of my students. Yeah. It's so much plastic. Wait a minute, tap out. Go to the what store? I thought you ain't going, Joanne. Wait a minute, Joanne. Don't repeat that. Don't you dare repeat that. No, that's not what you meant. Plastic. That's not what she meant, everybody. Okay. Yeah, but it's plastic everywhere. You can't no. see. No, yeah, plastic. No, no. You want to what you want? No. Come so we're gonna, we're gonna talk about the Mets now. Okay. Yeah. So in sports news. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no, how about the Cowboys? All well, right. let me ask you this. They're raising the, the minimum wage to $15 Great. an hour. I are think they? that is, yeah, in yes. some places they are. So Walmart. Yeah, Walmart is one of the places. Mm. And it was a fast food restaurant. Was, and I don't want to say McDonald's. McDonald's. I thought it was McDonald's. I wasn't sure. But why, though? They can have people to. No, but why? Them. What helped them do that? The protest. The protest, right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The protest. Right. And, yeah. Right. The protest. That's true. I agree. Uh -huh. Well, and, and they, not, down, not they messed just, their money up. They, just, they left work. And mm -hmm. messed that money up. Right. And that's, if we can get how that but works. Do you, right. But yeah. do you know who owns McDonald's here in Virginia, Richmond? Mm -hmm. A black woman owns about five, I yeah. think. Oh, okay. uh -huh. So I know she's making all this money. Well. So why not pay these people? They're working hard. Right. 24 hours they a working day. Hard. Yeah, I used to work Zip at a McDonald's. Yeah. I couldn't get a call job. me bougie. Oh, yeah. yeah, see, I used to work at a McDonald's. That's when McDonald's was bougie work. I want to work there, too. That's right. I do have a sandwich through the window. I, was, yeah. I had to go to Wendy's. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you were moving up in the world there. We got, well, we got a phone call. hire me. We got A.O. How are you? On line Hello. one. Good afternoon, Tanya. How are you? Fine. How about you? I'm sitting here listening to your group, Tanya, and I'm going to tell you, I, I hear a lot of disconnection. Okay. I mean, to say there's no hunger in America, come on. You ain't it's never not. been around Mississippi down to Alabama, South Carolina, Southern Virginia. There's hunger all over this country. The sad part about it is that even economically, you're sitting here talking about $15 an hour. The only reason is because in the three to six months from now, this economy is going to be in a hole. And there'll, there'll be people willing to take anything for a job. But yet, the normality of people's frame of mind makes them think that because if we act white enough, that won't affect us. Yeah. Oh, George, George, uh, I'm just so overpowered because I'm just listening to some of the things he's saying. Uh, my brother says to Barack Obama in the joke, I can't even think of his name, Dick Gregory, mm -hmm. said Barack Obama in the joke, whenever you think you have outgrown being black or being in segregation, go to New York and try to catch the this is the most segregated <laughs> country in the world. And guess what? When they see you, they don't give a damn what your education level is. They don't care what your financial situation is. They don't care how much money you got in your pocket. Mm -hmm. They hard. see somebody black. It's hard. Wow. It's hard to get one of realization. Y'all okay. got to come to the realization that what is happening out on that corner isn't happening out on the corner because these people want to be there. Literally. This the criminal industrial complex that's controlled by the racist white system of supremacy has put American blacks in a state in which, regardless of what level of education you get, there's no escape. And if you think I'm lying, go out in the street, stand on the corner where the light changes green, and walk across. Anybody. A lot of people think jaywalking is, is not common. It's very common. Mm -hmm. But that just gives them a reason. And that's all this system needs is a reason, okay. especially when you're black. And hey. if you don't believe me, you can look, read, pick up the paper at any given time. You're right. They're killing oh, us, God and that could very well be you. And, so and you, God bless you. And that's what we're talking Hey, hold on just a minute. We can take a break and be right back, okay? That's, that's a good point. And I don't.
keep you free. Memories give me the strength I need to proceed. Strength I need to believe. My thoughts big, I just can't define. Wish I could turn back the hands of time. Us in the six, shop for new clothes and kicks. You and me taking flicks, making hits. Stages they receive you on. Still can't believe you're gonna give anything to hear half your breath. I know you're still living your life after death. New Orleans Talk Network, now on your mobile device, on your computer, in your ear, and interactive. It's new, it's innovative, and it's on your mobile device, Android, iPhone, iPad, and on your computer. Take us wherever you go, because we're interactive. 504-341-TALK. That's 504-341-8255. Coffee Black, coming through to bring you the latest in sports, celebrity, and entertainment news. Here's the sip this week. So, K. Okay, Michelle has a new boo, and I must say it's a few steps, okay, a few stories down from it, Giselle, but she's dating Nikki's ex Safari, and it has to be publicity, especially now that Nikki is trotting around with Meek Mill all over the place. And just when everyone thought Sierra and Russell Westbrook were done, up pops some pictures of him pushing a baby carriage. I guess, girl, and on top of that, she thinks her whole music flopping lately has been due to her too perfect image. Uh, I don't think that's it. You just boring, girl. Sorry, had to keep it real in this quick minute. And lastly, the general manager of the Lakers has stated that next season will be Kobe's last season, at least with the Lakers. I can't see him in any other jersey, but that's what I thought about Jordan. I'm just saying. Check out more on my site, thesipwithcoffeeblack.com, and tune in next week to The Sip with Coffee Black. No sugar, no cream. Advertise with Tanya Free and Friends. Text the word advertise to 63975. That's 63975. Or give us a call at 844-321-1010. That's 844-321-1010. Real Brother here. Play resumes. I wanted to invite the friends to join me for the Real Brother Radio Show. Weekdays from 6 to 9 p.m. on the Real Brother Radio Show Network. And you can always like us on the Real Brother Radio Show Facebook page. That's the Real Brother Radio Show on the Real Brother Radio Network.com. Because the truth has value. Oh, I like that. Check out the Tiny Free and Friends Rewind. Every Thursday at 6 p.m. Eastern on the May We Help You Radio Network at MWHWRadio.com. Join the conversation. Phone lines are open right now at 804-321-1010. That's 804-321-1010. Hey, I'll go back to AO. AO, you made a comment that um, in New York, cabs are afraid to, or they won't stop for persons of color. And my thing is this, I'm talking during a break. To me, that would be an employment opportunity for us to open up our own cab company. And if you got people coming out of jail, they done dealt with worse folks than, you know, they thinking folks that are on the street, or, you know, trying to rob them anything. So I'm just asking the question, why don't we, you know, start our own cab company and pick up our own people? Actually, Tanya, 
that would be a good starting point. But anywhere when you got nothing is a good starting point. We we'll talk about people coming out of prison. The largest percentage of people who are supposed to come out of prison will not come out of prison. And the reason is because the prison industrial complex now is a corporation. And they need a supply. And in order for them to get that supply, they put the weight on the municipality. That's right. And that weight is coming right down on our community. So if you really want to start something, first do the due diligence. Let people know what is about to happen. 99.7 of America does not even know what the BRIC nations are. But yet, they're one of the biggest enemies against the United States dollar. When that dollar falls, this whole country will crash. But people are not aware of it. You know why? Because the media, which is run by three to five people all over the country, is being controlled. Right. It's being controlled. Yeah, so therefore, if, if you look at where you want to start at, a good place to start is wherever your feet is at, because the bottom line is you're only one. You can only multiply that with the best of Okay. Thank you, Ayo. We appreciate your comments. Definitely appreciate your comments. And you too. And what he said is, is the media being controlled. We saw that with Waco mm -hmm. and how they um, reported on Baltimore. Mm -hmm. Different as night and day. Mm -hmm. Different as night and day. I mean, and it was so obvious. That's the thing that got me. It was just so obvious. And they're still talking about Baltimore. When we talk about the 28 uh, shootings and nine mm -hmm. people died over three days in Waco, you had nine people die in one day, or like you said, in mm -hmm. hours. That motorcycle mm -hmm. game. Yeah. yeah, it's just crazy. And the other thing is in Waco, you didn't see all of the heavy law enforcement. At least I didn't see it mm -mm. like you did in Baltimore. So, yeah, you know, once again. Because it was planned. Yeah, they, remember, um, they said yeah. the cops had le were letting them know that we were here. Mm -hmm. We had a presence, and yeah. they still went, went out with it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. I mean, exactly. They should have posted people inside, but they didn't want to get shot together. But they were shooting each other, so hey. Yeah. Unbelievable. Mm -hmm. But when we shoot each other, mm -hmm. and, and, the other, and the other aspect of it, the officers showed up at Waco, mm -hmm. and they weren't passive in dealing with that situation mm -hmm. like this weekend with the 28 in Baltimore. So mm -hmm. it's a difference it's night and day. And, you know, we got to keep talking about how we can change it or what we can do. And, you know, like I said, when people don't serve us, then we need to um, step up and well. serve ourselves. But the truth of the, you know, one of the things is we are afraid as well on some levels. And that we don't mm -hmm. want to say it, but I mean, the reality, you know, truth being told, you talked about it, uh, Eric, during the break. Mm. What did I say? <laughs> Wake up, Eric. You said no, you're, not, you're not getting a cabin and going into communities and actually picking up. And I think you did too, Uncle Mo. Yeah, shooting <coughs> cabs coming out of the neighborhood. Uncle yeah. Man. Nope. See, no value for us. Well, I mean, then, I get it. Then, you're, then you are supporting the folks that are not going in our neighborhood. No, I'm not supporting them. What I'm saying is, I, I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to be. Thank you. I'm, I'm not going to be blind to what I know is there. Mm -hmm. Right. If, if 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 I know I'm terrified of dogs, I've got no business going to the SPCA. Mm -hmm. That's all they got in there. <laughs> or like going to a if gay got, club. You know, I ain't scared yeah, them, I, but like, I, I don't yeah, get hit I'm, on. Same yeah. thing. Uh, if, if 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 I'm a what some the whole homophobic route. I've got no business going to a you know place where I know good and well that in, that element is going to be there. I'm, I'm looking bogan. for a problem. They need your service. Who? They Who's need that? a ride. The ride or gay go people. to get to their well, get job there. Well, or get to the there, grocery then. store. I don't, and you know what? And you know what? I, uh, I completely agree. And they do. They just can't do that with me. So <laughs> yeah, you know, you know what? We need cab to service. It's called Uber. Outstanding. Yeah, they, yeah, they, they come, okay. yeah, Uber okay. do it for you. Okay. Yeah. But the thing is, just coming up get shot. Well, <laughs> well, <laughs> well, but we talking about cash, but we talking about other things too. We talking about education. Right. We talking about retail. We talking about jobs. We're talking about more than just cabs here. Yeah. And that's the thing we're trying to turn around and trying to change. But I think it does start with us and our mentality and how we see ourselves. We talked about this last week. We talked about it a minute ago as when we were coming up, how our parents had a sense of pride and, and respect for themselves and uh, um, wanted us and made sure, you know, that we had a respect for ourselves mm -hmm. as well. Like I said, we were not going to be a menace to society. Hanging mm -hmm. out on the street, not going to school, and those, those sort of things were not on the agenda. That's, right. That's where I have a problem when we said earlier where you were talking about, you know, um, 
people coming to your school and they dropped out of high school. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to, you know, trying to was answer, trying to get you to answer the question as to how did they get to that point or why do we have a high dropout rate amongst our people? And you were talking about parenting and, you know, a single mother can do it. I, I posted an article uh, with where this woman, where this young lady, um, young, I think it was a teen, if my memory serves me correctly, and she um, got through school and was living on the street, valedictorian. So, and I had an, another article two weeks ago where this gentleman graduated from college, lived on the street. And, you know, it, I, I, like I always say, there's a will, there's a way. You know, um, to rise above the fray. I'll Exception. say this about the adults who are coming through Dream Academy. Broke. They want an education because right. they have dreams. And some are saying, well, I put my education on hold because I wanted to do work with my children. Okay, to be That's, I, I, children, I can go with so, that. I yeah. can go with that. Mm -hmm. I can go, I can live with that. And I yeah. think that is a legitimate excuse. But if you... Uh, had the mindset that, oh, I don't need my education. Yeah. And then when you drop out and then realize that, oh, you do need mm -hmm. it and you don't go back and get it, or you realize and see how hard life is yeah. without it, I hope that those that um, uh, would teach their kids that, oh, hey, you're going to stay in school mm -hmm. come heck of mm -hmm. high water. <clears throat> I may get in trouble for this, but you really don't need education, though. You just need knowledge, sweet knowledge. Let's, let's say for instance, you come How out of school. you say something no, like that? It's a lot of people who came up during the <laughs> please, 20s or whatever. Please, please bleep that out. No, it's a lot of people who came up in the 20s or whatever. If you have the insight to start your business and by the hand of money. That's, that's different. That's a different time. time. No, it's Eric. not different. No, different time, no, Eric. no, uh -huh. because what they do, please they teach you to go to high school and college. They, they get you in debt. It's a, no, it's a system. Eric, I, no, I, I can't go with you. Everybody got to keep off of that system. Hey, it's a system for everybody who wants to go to college. Has ingenuity and think on on their feet. Aren't like you getting your education? Yeah. Case closed. Can we go to the phone? Okay. Erica? <laughs> Hi, Hi Erica. How are like you? That. Hi. Uh, yes, I'd like to make a comment. I know earlier you all were, um, it was said that about the young men that are killing each other in Baltimore on the street corners and all of that. But I'd like to just make a comment that we have to understand that this was all done by design. Mm -hmm. And the people that have designed it are sitting back looking at what they have constructed right. because it's falling and it's playing right into what they wanted to, it to be. First, they bring us from Africa and they strip us from everything. Right. It isn't like we're Asian. It isn't right. like we're Me Indian. Too, we didn't that. come here because we wanted to be here. They mm -hmm. brought us here. They mm -hmm. stripped us of everything mm -hmm. that there was. Then they gave us a white Jesus. They took away who Yo, we believe black, black. was the God. Well, I'm not even going to go that far into <laughs> that rabbit hole, but they have us worshiping a white Jesus, even though the Bible says is a, a very clear description of what Jesus looks like with the woolly hair and the feet of bronze. But instead, they give us another deity to worship. Then they take the Bible and use that as scripture to beat us and to keep us enslaved. Then they have a show like Mari, where if they do oh, backflips, yeah. if, if the baby ain't Mark, the baby Mark. daddy, you know what I mean? Now, let's just think. Oh, no, Mari's yeah. been doing that show for 10, 12 years now. Mm -hmm. well, how old are those kids that ain't the baby daddy or is the baby daddy or whatever? Those kids are those kids that are standing on the street corner that don't know who they are. They don't know where they belong. They were in a family who thought they had them, and then grandparents, aunties, uncles, now they snatched them. The other daddy don't want them. The mom's getting on, on, on national TV telling them, the whole world, you ain't this, you ain't that, cussing anybody out. I mean, so what, what foundation do we have for our especially young black men? What foundation? That's, that's I was a good listening question. to one of the uh, Tando show yesterday okay. talking about taxes and how there's no law to even pay taxes. There's nothing that we thought was the way it was supposed to be is the truth. So are you, what foundation do they have? It's hard enough as adults. For us in our 30s, 40s, 50s, like us who are, you know, on this radio show, mm -hmm. it's, hard enough, it's hard enough for us to conceive. How are these younger people going to conceive? And guess what? We know our daddy mama and we know our mama. Good point. We have a generation that don't know that. That is a very good point, uh, Erica. And uh, uh, go ahead, Uncle Mo. At some point. Thank you, Eric. Appreciate your comments. At some point. Yes, you're welcome. I'll keep listening. At some point, everybody has got to be responsible for their own. Thank you, Mo. I don't. I, I, I'm, not gonna say, I'm not going to say. <laughs> I'm not going to say I don't understand because truly I do. But I do know this as well. At some point, you're going to have to get up off your knees. Mm -hmm. And get out 
and go do something for yourself. Mm-hmm. Number one, your found number one foundation. I don't care if you weren't raised right. You know what? How you know how to act. And if you don't know how to act, you got sure enough got a way to go figure it out. There's too many resources out here. Well, raise your family properly. Well, one thing, I, and I, I have booty. to agree with Erica. That why do we support um, what's his name? Um, Mario Poets. Mario Poets. Oh, why do we watch that, that crap? I don't we, even look at you know. It. Uh, you know what? You know what? I'm gonna take it. You, you know, you the you know why we support it? No, number one, the negativity behind it. Awful. We we, we, we watch it. it. It's, it we we can see we can see negativity is entertaining. Yeah. All number that one. negative two, stuff opposed to wanting something that's going to educate our minds. And but don't they two, get paid positive. for being on the show? Yeah, they do. Okay, okay, so they're getting paid. It's entertainment. And it's, dis- it, well, it's disgraceful. It is. The second piece of it, that. And they look at all of us. When they look at that, they look at all of us. Grace said, uh, Grace is new jacking and swinging in my rocket, enjoying the music. Thank you, Grace. Um, thank you, Mr. Free, for that. <laughs> well, we're out of time. As always, I really thank God, my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for allowing us the opportunity and hopefully to be heard. Thanks to our listening friends. Blessings to each and every one of you. Of course, thanks to Bill, Eric, Joanne, Uncle Mo, Antoinette, Marcus, Jeremiah, Coffee Black, Andre, El Bravador, Roosevelt, and Mr. Free. I'm Tanya Free. Until next time, be free. Remember to live life with a purpose. So screaming, the media says what kind of music is this for you? The dance to the man with the plan and the band demands you. Leave the smack and the crack for the whack, for the ball and the knock, keep a smile like that. Leave the knife and the gun in the store and ignore temptation set by the nation. Racial game causes pain, needs a new rep. In your heart and mind, never forget you set. Hawkins, and when you're walking, you know just one. Black on black, remember that it's important. Anyway, the shunless one, bring forth the fun. No hatred, the summer's almost done. No time for sleep. Jump in your Jeep and pump up the funky beat. A holy fever goes off, yo, smash it, then trash it. You're too young to be plumped in a casket. Just get your boys and bring the noise and just swing it. And for the people, sing it. on the big man. Can he come out? Can he come out and slam a jam? I'm his number one fan. Yes, I am. All these kids realize that I'm the man. Six foot three and maybe a quarter of an inch bigger than last year, but still a unique figure. Thanks for joining us for this installment of Tanya Free and Friends Talk Radio. Don't forget, the conversation continues 24-7 at TanyaFree.com. Keep up with the hottest topics of the day. Post your comments, opinions, and more. All at TanyaFree.com. On air, online, and on point. The views and opinions expressed by the guests do not necessarily reflect the views of the host and or this station. Tanya Free and Friends Radio is a production of Freedom Marketing, Inc. All rights reserved.